Good evening and welcome to Eastern Neston Park in Northamptonshire, part of Lord Hesketh's estate. The magnificent setting for the final of the 1981 Kickstart competition. You'll remember we started on Monday with 18 international riders, the finest group of talented riders ever assembled before for television in this country. And we're now down to the final seven. And if you look at the full list of the competitors, you'll see that those seven come from six different countries. There's only one Briton represented. He's last year's winner of Kickstart, John Reynolds. And he was the slowest of the qualifiers from heat one. So the scene is set for a really magnificent final. Very talented riders indeed. The top prize today, 500 pounds and the Eton Yale trophy. Who's going to win it? Well, oh, personally, I favor the Belgian Eddie Lejeune, but any one of these men quite capable of winning it. Let's see what happens. I'm going to join my colleague now, Mick Andrews, in the commentary box. Let's go to the first man at the starting line. So the first man to go then, on the starting line already, last year's winner, the slowest qualifier, the only British representative, John Reynolds, competitor number one. So John really up against it here, and a great leap to start off. That's a really difficult jump. It's uh, something like eight or nine feet. Yes, he, he, yes he's on the 320cc Suzuki, so he has the power to jump that. It's difficult to get away from the start line, I think, to clear the wall. Yes, it's a short run in, but everything that follows after that, that's no joke. And the bunny hop's taken its toll again. Now, actually, he failed on that in both of his uh, runs in the first heat. This is something with the English riders. They don't practice that a lot, and it's very new to them. So we have to give them a little time to start the practice. No penalties for feet down, incidentally, as in the heat. Just 20 seconds for failing to go out of the proper gate. And for things like the bunny hop, of course. Over the box fine. We decided to put that in again just to make it awkward. And now up this rather steep, almost vertical bank at the top. Difficult ridge, much harder than it looks actually that. And down into the dip again for the second time to that water. And we have a sneaky feeling that that water is going to get deeper and nastier. It is getting deeper as all the machines go through, yes it is. Oh, and again. he's failed it again, so that's 40 second penalty so far. It's a pity, he's clear apart. That's a nasty drop off the seesaw. Time up there in the top corner. Oh, and he stalled it in the middle of those rocks. You can see there exactly what I mean about the kick-starting the machine in gear. He had to select neutral to start the machine, and that wasted him a few seconds. So, having to go hard now. There's the elapsed time for this first loop, plus his faults. The last section to come now, the tyres. This is pretty hard. And he makes it beautifully. That's a good ride. Well, he's got 40 seconds to add to that. Makes 156.1 his full time. The next man to go, the Finn. Irio Vesterinen. He's the man who is currently second in the World Trials Championship. Time to beat. 156.1. And he's lost that. Oh dear, now that's a surprise. He won't be pleased about that. He's also missed his exit gate. Now he's the man who got into the final, you'll remember, on a protest. He protested about the positioning of one of the obstacles in his heat. And consequently, when that objection was upheld, he came through into the final. But he's already almost certainly out of it, having thrown his bike away on that first jump. Yes, he gave it too much gas and uh, an extra pull at the handlebars, which completely lost control. He'll be very upset now. A nice bunny hop. That's a steep little bank there. I'm calling it a little bank. They're all 30 foot of these. only put that uh, losing his bike down to nerves there because he was fairly keyed up but he's a very fine rider yes he would be nerves surely yes that's the little s here through these banks they're almost vertical at the top again tight little drops so far that little car hasn't caused any problems to anyone i'm rather surprised about that Yes, it's the dry weather, I suppose. Had it been wet today, that could have been a big problem. Well, we've been blessed with good weather. It's lucky for the riders, in fact, but the clouds overhead beginning to get rather heavy, a little bit thundery, and he's got a 20-second penalty there. 
So he's in trouble now. No, he's way out of it now. There's the time he has to beat, but he has penalties. He's really pushing on in between the sections. This is the 340cc bull tackle. And uh, it's one of the new six-speed ones. Coming into the tyres now. He only has a 20-second penalty, actually. So he might just be in there. 20 to add to that makes 151.1. He's actually in the lead. The Japanese Kyotero Hattori then to face this course, which is causing a few problems. He was the winner of the first heat. That's the least known of the riders in the championship. It is, yes, but uh, he came over from Japan last year and he's been riding fantastically since then. I practice quite often with him and uh, he's very, very good. See how deep that is getting. It's way over those uh, wheel hubs. It's a big lad for Japanese. Very good. That's nice. Clean so far. There's the time to beat 151.1, set by Hirio Vesterinen. There's rocks where John Reynolds came to grief. He's riding one of the two four-stroke machines in the event. But they can tell by the, the different sound from the exhaust. He's riding very good. It's very controlled, isn't it? Feel there's any advantage to the four stroke over the two stroke in uh, this kind of competition? Not in this kind of competition, no, but when it's very wet, yes. They, they always get extra traction. You can see that log there moving in the water. Yeah, very, hit very hard. Mm -hmm. Bunny hop again, and he's clean Running. again. So he's faultless so far. This is a good round. It's a test of great skill, and the riders really are performing extremely well, even those who've had the problems. But he took time there to control himself before the hazard. And he's putting up a very good time. After the rocks, he's got this S descent. Down, up and down again. And just the tyres to the finish. And so far, it's clean. This is a good run. He must take the lead. Short of a disaster now. This last one is very difficult. He's over. But you can see how hard that was, really throwing the bike up, but that's his time, and that's what it'll be. 116 dead. Competitor number 10, Jean-Luc Colson of Belgium, perhaps the surprise qualifier for this final, about to go off. The time to beat, 116 seconds. And a tremendous leap, that. That's a tremendous the longest one. one we've seen. That's a 200cc machine, and he got off the line really well. Please hazard very carefully prepared to present the utmost difficulty. Now the pose before the bunny. Yes. Well, these are all world class riders that make it look so simple, but my word, this course is steep, awkward, tricky in every way. I'm saying he's the uh, surprise qualifier, and he uh, beat some good lads in uh, his heat. And he's really forcing on now, he's going very, very well. Some little engine revving away. I think, Mick, you were expecting one or two of them to leap off that uh, S descent, but none, no one's tried to fly it yet. No one has tried to fly it, no. I'm very surprised. But they're taking a little bit of caution. Of course, as in the heats, this is run over two legs. Every rider goes twice, once in the direction that you can see Colson riding now, once in the opposite direction. The aggregate time decides the winner. Total, or rather, first prize... Oh, 20 seconds there. First prize of £500 to the winner. And don't forget, all these fellas to qualify for the final have already earned good money. More than the money, I think. The name on the Kickstart trophy is what they want. I wonder if they're tiring a little bit on the uh, second loop, because that's when they tend to make the mistakes. Well, there's the time to beat, 116 seconds, and he could well do it. It's going to be close. No, he can't. He's got his penalty, of course, for the bunny hop, so he can't get in there. He's really, at the moment, struggling to be in second place. Even. 20 to add makes 132.4. He does take second place. 
this man, Jean-Pierre Goy of France, a great favourite with the crowd. He delighted them with his tricks riding the other day. The winner of the second heat. And well, he makes that look very easy. But he's the lad that Mick Andrews said he didn't really rate too highly as a trials rider, but was a very good trick cyclist. He's the greatest trick cyclist in the world. But uh, the strange thing is, in France, he's only in the junior class and he's not even leading that. It doesn't make sense because he appears to me to be very good. It, no, it doesn't to me. But as trick riding goes, he's the greatest in the world. In fact, in France, he's even banned from doing some of the arena trials because he's so good. Virtually unbeatable. Yes. I saw those front forks really take a bashing on those rocks. Yeah. You can hear the suspension banging as they drop down these banks. Just listen here. It should bang. He didn't jump it, he wasn't interested in that. He's really after the speed. He's certainly attacking this course fast, and he's well up on the clock. Climbing the steep bank then to get onto the ridge and start the second half lap. Clear so far. He's going well. The bunny hop. He shouldn't make any mistakes on that, should he? I mean, after the things we've seen him do here this week, there's no way he's going to knock that bar over. Bearing in mind, this is only a 200cc machine. In fact, the exact capacity is only 156. Well, he's putting up a tremendous speed here. He ought to go into the lead with this. Two obstacles to go. He's got this S-bend descent. Down, up, down again. The tyres. There's the time to beat, and he's clean so far. Oh, he's down! Well, what a surprise. You'd think he could do anything with that bike. Let's hope he's not hurt. He's certainly riding as if he isn't. He's there. It's faultless, 106.6. But what a surprise. Let's just take another look at that fall there. He's been riding this bank as if the bike was glued to it previously with his trick riding. But see the way he just comes over there and loses it. Well, this man, Eddie Lejeune, came back from the dead in his heat to qualify. And you'll notice, actually, at the starting gate there, he's not wearing gloves. No, a lot of the trial riders don't use gloves, but uh, anyone who's watching, I think that's a silly thing to do. Because you damage your hands very easily. Well, that was a huge leap at the beginning, and this man does ride fast. He came back, as I say, virtually from the dead in his heat to qualify. He thought he was out of it. A surprise omission it would have been. noticed all the riders are wearing crash helmets which uh, also to anyone watching never go on a bike without one in fact isn't it compulsory as far as uh, events like these concerned? it is He's lost it, it is compulsory yes well this must be nerves he must be very keyed up indeed because i've seen him stand that bike on its rear wheel and ride around the rim of the sixpence but he's possibly riding the most powerful bike in the trial along with a tory these are 360cc machines, and very, very powerful. And on the slippery grass, it is a handful. And he was having trouble over the top of the car there, but he's a little slower. He's a little slower than Jean-Pierre Goy. This will be uh, a great relief to Goy, I should think, because of course he had that bad fall. He looks to me as though he's panicking a little bit with the time. It's not necessary. He goes like this. Pure nerves, but he's yeah. here so far. Actually, it isn't a bad time, though. It's going to be tight it's on the time fast. that Jean-Pierre Goy put in. Very close to it, if not better. Yes, he's more composed now. He's steady so down. The S-Bend descent. Again, we saw him doing some fairly clever stunts on this. He's not going to do it, though. He's going to be behind Goy's time. It's close, he is clear, so there's nothing to add yet. He makes the tyre hazard pretty well there. 110.2, that's his proper tyre. Bernie Schreiber then with every chance of going into the lead here. He was the fastest qualifier for the final. 1979 winner of this event. How is he going to manage on the first leg of this final? Well, we thought that wall would produce some real difficulties, but with the exception of Irio Vesterinen, no one's had any problem at all. We're clearing it easily, aren't we? It's getting deeper and deeper than digging yes. it out. And of course, has to be passed through six times again. It's going well. 
just to give you a guide, by the time he reaches the Volkswagen, we're looking for a time better than about 50 seconds, and that's really the mark. The suspension is on the bottom when they land from there. It's incredible. Tight turn there, could have got in problems, but he managed to pull out of it all right. These bikes are taking a hammer. Yes, he's there, he's well in contention, but whether he's faster than Goy, don't forget, Goy fell on the second lap, not on the first. So it's not a totally accurate guide, that. Look at the water now, it's getting really deep. No penalties for the feet down, of course, but it's uh, beginning to be absolutely essential that you put them down. I think so, yes. I don't think you can get yeah. through without. As far as I can see from the course marshals, he's clear so far. It's a good ride, he's really battling it through. Big lad, too, he's uh, over six foot. He's got a bit between his teeth now. He knows that he's in for a good time. There's the time to beat, 106.6, and it looks like he may well do it. One hazard to go. He spoils it on these tires. Oh, it's Very not going to make it. How close can you get? Oh, three tenths of a second. 106.3, Schreiber takes the lead. And that brilliant ride by Bernie Schreiber of the United States of America completes the first round in this grand final of the 1981 kickstart competition. Now, the second leg will be run the slowest man going first, but let's take a look at all of the times. The first man to go, of course, Englishman John Reynolds. His time with penalties, 156.1. Irio Vesterinen of Finland, surprisingly well down the list with 151.1. Kyoteru Hattori of Japan, 116 seconds dead. Jean-Luc Colson of Belgium, 132.4 seconds. Jean-Pierre Goy of France, a brilliant ride in spite of a fall, 106.6 seconds. Eddie Lejeune of Belgium, 110.2 seconds. And Bernie Schreiber of the USA, of course, 106.3. So the only English rider in the championship was slowest in the first round, John Reynolds of Great Britain. Going to be started off by Alexander Hesketh there with the Union flag. It's total time so far in the left-hand corner. You've got no mathematics to do. What you see up in that top corner, that's how long it's taken for the two runs. Now then, come on, John. Everything in reverse order here. So it's two climbs up instead of two drops down. On this little bit. And having a bit of difficulty there. Yes. So holding on to it. Took that turn very tight. And he's pulling a high gear. Well, it's an interesting bit of technique on those rocks. He threw the bike at it rather, trying to jump the gap that caused him to stall first time. Yes, he did. He did. Exactly. Come on, John. You've got that Bunny Union Hulk, Jack on your chest. He's failed this so many times, he's again. done it again. He's had no luck with that at all. The lot of the bunny hops depend a lot on the rear, sec on the, uh, rear suspension. Jumps a little bit of the course there, getting up onto that ridge. And look at that drop. Oh, dear. I expect we'll see some flyers over that later. Total time for two legs up there in the left-hand corner of the screen. John is pushing on. He's going fast. He knows it. he blew his chances in the first round. Not too many of the really fast men went faultless, so uh, yes, I think he's really out of it. But he's certainly having a go, isn't he? And he's again. failed it again. If he had a little bit more quick return on the rear suspension, it makes the bunny hop so much easier. And so he's over through these two awkward little gates at the top, and it's down just the wall to jump to get him back to the finish. He has 40 seconds of faults, though. He's clear on the wall and through. 273.3 plus 40, 313.3. Irio Vesterinen of Finland, surprisingly, in sixth position after the first leg. A man I haven't seen smile once throughout this competition. A very serious young man indeed. As we go back to our original starter, Nick Britton taking the flag back. Vesterinen not quite ready. 
And there he goes. Breaks the magic eye. Time to beat 313.3 to give him any chance at all. This time in the left hand top corner. And there's a man who was very unhappy about the showing he put up in the first leg. And Ross was rather surprised to see him put up such a slow time. He is a surprise, yes, because uh, three times world champion. And uh, I'm surprised that he did put up a bad showing. Though he's uh, not totally happy about the style of competition this season. He prefer Oh, he's off! Now that really won't please him at all. He's had a miserable competition. Objections in the heat, and then finally crashing off the seesaw. He's got to get it started. He has to get out to the... I think he managed to get through the gate, which, believe it or not, is in the centre pivot of that seesaw. He was through that, so he's not penalised except his own time, but he, he managed to clear that well. He's over the body hole. He's having he's, a bad round. He's not happy at all. Well, this is amazing. One man I really would have uh, quite happily put money on to win this championship, really. And he's crashed, actually come off his bike severely in both the first and second leg. But he's trying now. He must get the bit between his teeth and make it go. I would like to be in but his boots to know that I've got to go over that seesaw again. I've come off it so badly. No, he, he won't be wanting to ride that again. But you can see he's, he's riding without a lot of interest. You can see that in his style. I'm used to Vesterina's way of riding, and uh, it's not this way. He's lost all interest. Would you say perhaps the kind of fellow here who does tend to lose the interest when? He knows he can't do it, but he manages that bunny hop. No mistake with that. Well, there's his time, 280. You, you watch the front suspension hidden on the bottom. Just the gates at the top of the hill and the wall to come. He's taken the wrong route. He's got to go back. Oh, dear. This is a great shame. He's in terrible trouble now, confused. He forgot that he was on his second lap. He's got to get through the gates, he's through it, so he won't be penalised, he's gone back. I suspect he is clear. He is clear, but look at this time. He has no faults, he's still got to clear the wall. He's got to be last, and he's knocked a brick. The brick's gone from the wall. 20 seconds there, there is a penalty, there's the break, that costs him 20 seconds, so his time 316.1 plus 20, 336.1. So the next man to go, the slower of the two Belgians, Jean-Luc Colson riding a Montessa. Just one penalty of 20 seconds and a good time in this first round. About to start the reverse leg. There goes the flag. The clock starts as he goes through the magic eye. Time to beat 313 by threes. Oh, dear, now this was a disastrous start for him. Now that won't do anything for his confidence, will it, Mick? It won't, no, but uh, with these Belgians, they are triers. And if they make a little mistake, they get really going. It didn't lose him a lot of time. That's a surprising thing. Of course, you don't get any penalties uh, for a mistake like He's that. He's penalised by the time you lose, and he is picking up all the way. But perhaps a little reckless. I think he's just gained what he lost on the tyres. He just gained back there across those rocks. Well, I don't know how that stayed. He landed right on the top of it. That is surprising. And as we were saying earlier, this hole is getting deeper. Yes. They're yeah. having difficulty getting that front wheel over now. And that's a small machine going up that bank. He went up there nicely. That's a real death drop there. Very steep. This is a very nasty, very tricky course. Riding it along on its front wheel. He's pushing it hard. He was really the surprise qualifier, I suppose, Colson. But he can't half ride that bike. Look, flying it over the hole in the rocks. This guy is trying hard. He realizes after that first mistake on the tires, he has to gain time. Right, the bike to the bottom there. Oh. oh, making a mess of that bunny hop. So there's a fault of 20 seconds for him there. Is 
he going to make the same mistake Vesterina did? Through the gate, he's done it right. Just the wall to jump. He could well take the lead here. He has, he's clear of the wall, but he actually has 40 seconds of fault. He got 20 on the uh, stream as well. He didn't go over that. So 40 to add to that, 292.8. So the Japanese, the next to go, Kyoteru Hattori, the time to beat 292.8, the time set up by the Belgian Jean-Luc Colson. Now his time in the first leg, 116 seconds, very fast. Uh, not falling into the same trap Colson did, falling off the bike there. He's a nice, easy rider, this one. He's very composed. He's actually deceptively fast. Yes. It's only 10 seconds slower than Schreiber, who looks extremely fast. So, uh... And he's a strong boy. And the turn now to the bunny hop. And he's oh, failed dear. on that. So many of the riders have had difficulty on that bunny hop. Those logs now are getting really difficult with a deep hole before them and the deep hole. Yes, I can't say the course is getting easier for people, no. the moisture and it's getting harder, if anything. And I also think that done in this direction, the course looks very much harder than it did the first It is, yes. Well, he's on to his second lap. Exit gate and over the rocks. Lost it there, but uh, managed to hang on. Again, no penalties for the foot down. The entry gates and exit gates are the important things. He's running around quite nicely. Penalised first time round, he's made it that time, that's good. And you watch this water hole, it's getting really deep. Though so, uh, he managed that pretty well as he goes out through those gates at the top. The jump to do, and so far his penalty is, I think, 20 seconds. 20 seconds for the bunny hop the first time round. Time then total 263.4. He's in the lead. Eddie Lejeune of Belgium, one of the three remaining riders who was faultless on the first leg. So it's all down to the clock, but these guys, well, if they don't make mistakes, then the times are going to be very tight. There's only four seconds separating the three of them. Oh, and he's come off on that. Well, that really is extraordinary. The very first section, he's off there. He's got a 20-second penalty for crashing out from the tapes. So he's got everything to do now. I think that's he's just blown his chances. Well, I can't see either of the oh. remaining two performing the same failure on the tyres, but uh, any sort of mistake is possible on the course. Anything can. I'm a little worried about Eddie going through the water with his glasses. One of the few riders who wears glasses, isn't he? But, uh, extremely skilled. Depends how much it splashes. No, it's not splashing no. up at him. And he took that rather well, I thought. Well, Throwing that bike around. Well, he's really fighting this hard. He's got a lot of leeway to make up because Jean-Pierre Goy and Bernie Schreiber who still are to come. I can't see them making that kind of mistake. No, but uh, we didn't think this guy was going to make that sort of mistake, and he did. And it's possible they can make a mistake. As in the heat, Eddie Lejeune walked this course again in the reverse direction, looking for ways to clip off half seconds. He's so conscientious. Oh, and that 20-second penalty there. So that's 40 he has. I think he's probably out of it. These guys now are getting tired. They must be feeling it. 
and he's stalled it at the top and he's missed the gate. Now he's got a problem. He's got to start it. He's got to get back on the course. He's broken the tape, which is not a gate there. So he's got to get back on the course and come down. We have to wait and see whether he gets a 20 second penalty. I don't. No, he's OK. He's come back the right way, so he hasn't got the penalty, but it must have cost him an awful lot of time waiting there. There's the time he's supposed to beat. In running time, he's beaten it, but his penalties, 40 altogether, makes 278.8. He's pushed himself well down the list. <laughs> oh, so I've got a soft spot for this guy. Jean-Pierre Goy of France, a lad who's really entertained the crowd here. And his time there, 106.6 seconds on the first leg, just three tenths of a second slower than the man who's to follow him, Bernie Schreiber of the United States. So everything to go for for Jean-Pierre Goy, who just managed to keep it in there, I think. And he's really going to try for this because Schreiber, he knows, is fast. And Goy has a little bit of a disadvantage with riding a small machine in a speed competition. Remember, this machine is the capacity is only 156cc, whereas Schreiber's riding at 325cc. He's off! He's actually through the gate. Now, the way he recovered there was magnificent. The gate is the pivot of the seesaw. The front wheel was through it, so he's cleaned it. But my word, he was lucky. He's still going. Now, we said he was a trick rider. He showed a few tricks now. He's called How Not to Fall Flat on Your Back. I exactly, think. yes. Look at that time. The time he has to beat to go into the lead is in the right-hand corner, his time ticking away in the left-hand corner. Clear so far. And I think the crowd here would be delighted were he to win it. He's pushing hard. See the suspension bottom out down there. It's, it's incredible to punish these bikes to take. Flying it over the dip in the centre of those rocks. Here we come to the seesaw again, but he's going to make it this. Oh, he's going to fly it instead. Well, that's just to show his contempt for that particular obstacle. He manages the bunny hop. It's clean. He's clean so far. This is a good time. And Schreiber's going to have it all to do. The gate's at the top of the hill and the wall to jump. That's all for Jean-Pierre Goy of France. It's a good time, a little slower than the first leg, but it's a good time. He's clean the whole way round, 216.3. Well, that's a challenge for Schreiber, who goes next. Bernie Schreiber of the United States of America with it all to do. The time to beat, 216.3. His time so far, 106.3. 110 seconds he's got to go round this course. Nick Britton sets him off. Can Bernie do it? Well, I think if anyone in this field could, it's him. Let's just wait and see. It's been a fearsome challenge for some of the world's finest riders, this grand final of the 1981 Kickstart Challenge. And Schreiber's going for it. Yes, he's going hard. Absolutely flew the rocks. He hardly touched them. He's going hard. Well, this is an impressive ride. Just see those seconds ticking away. He's clear. Mind, he should be clear on it. We've seen him jump five people on the ground in that body hop. No penalty for the foot down. But my word, it's almost burying the bike now. Let's hope he can remember which way to go on the circuit. The tiniest mistake, and he's out of it. You can see the time. It's ticking away. He knows it is. The rain's keeping off, but only just as Bernie Schreiber starts his second lap. 1979 winner of this event. Well, I don't think he had to fight then quite like he's got to fight now. He's clean so far. Yes, he's riding with confidence now. 30 seconds to go. He's faultless so far. It's gone. gone! 20 seconds, he's ridden himself out of it. I can't believe that he damaged the bunny hop there. He's gone again in the water, he's lost it. 20 second penalty, Schreiber is out, he'll be in second place. I can't see him going lower than second place, but my word. A brilliant leap out at the end, 20 to add to that makes 234, and that leaves our winner from France, a very popular young man indeed, Jean-Pierre Goy, with a time of 216.3 seconds.